Welcome YouTube to another video of mine. Um, I'm glad you came back. And uh, yeah, I will not disappoint you and show you right away my assembled and fully glued uh, first ever Knights of Britonia. And I chose, of course, the King's Knights, uh, which are experienced knights, which are knights who have been through a lot of dangers and a lot of trials and they have shown their proven their worth to the king or to the duke whatever and uh, yeah so as you can see I have eight knights um, assembled here it was quite um, uh, a work that I enjoyed to do really much because um, as you might see from the pictures here um, they are plastic models, which means they are not Games Workshop fine cast. So you have some possibilities to arrange their bodies and torsos um, according to your imagination. So you're not forced to just pick the model and leave it as it is, because there are no other ways to yet yeah, to fashion it. So it was quite fun to choose the body parts, to choose the helmets you want, to choose uh, the horses. And uh, yeah, so each of those knights looks a little bit different and has a unique style to it. And that's another huge aspect why I chose the Bretonian army, because I think their factor of uniqueness is pretty much higher than uh, compared to other armies like the Empire, where you have full regiments of foot soldiers or archers that look basically very similar to each other. Okay, let's start right ahead and uh, let me introduce you to my first assembled knights. As you will see, they're not primed yet. I will do this in the next step, so um, when we do a cut I will be back with the prime models for you. Okay, but now take a look at the first knight to the very right side. He has a and he has a helmet with oh you can see it from this angle with a Pegasus on his head. So you have a Pegasus. So let me introduce you to the knight on the very right side. As you can see, well maybe not from this angle, so let me change that a little bit. He has a pegasus on his head, on his helmet. So each of my knights has a different animal on the top of his helmet, so to, to provide them with um, a even bigger level of uniqueness. Look at all the details here, the sword. Pretty neat, I think. Okay. Let's move on to the next fellow knight. And let's also take a look at the helmet of this little fella. He has a boar on his head, spiked with a with a dagger. Onto the next knight with a little dragon holding a sword in his hands, in his claws, on his head, and at the same time he is the the standard bearer, so quite an important job to do, and he will be an important person in my fluff, which I I have not fully done yet, but in my next video I will provide you with, the, with some information about my fluff. By the way, if you are not familiar with the term fluff, the fluff is basically um, the, the basic uh, historical background you choose for your army. So, for example, you could uh, simply choose those knights to be regular knights of Britonia in the Warhammer universe and that's totally fine. But you could also chose 
I choose those knights to be um, maybe from one um, duchess and from one county only. So if you have a themed army, for example, then that's also perfectly fine. You're allowed to do anything with your fluff because it's your imagination that counts. On to the next one. He has a fancy helmet, I think. Look at this. I really love... Oh, I really love this helmet. It's so badass. He looks like a, a knight from the woods. A little bit like... And Maybe I will give a look um, that resembles the forests and nature to him, so... I have not decided yet. And the next fella, he has... A lion on top of his helmet. So, as the lion will be my um, primary animal and the mascot, so to say, he has a special role. And he's the only one that has no lance in his hands. He has a sword. So he will be the leader of the group of knights here. And here we have a little demon just impaled uh, on the top of his head so he will be some kind of demon slayer maybe and here we have a musician who keeps up the morale of surrounding troops and maybe he could also be a messenger to deliver orders to other regiments I have not decided yet we will see and on the very left side my last knight has a falcon or an eagle on top of his helmet and he's a very he has got a very vicious pose he's like charging the enemy so he will be one of the knights that's in front of the lance formation okay so I have successfully assembled my knights I'm really happy how they turned out I like the movements and I like the dynamics in um, yeah, the looks of them. So, what I'm going to do now is I will prime them with Army Painter White. And after finishing priming them, I will I'll grant you another look. And I'm excited how they will turn out then. All in shiny bright white. So, see you later. So, here I am back again after priming my miniatures in white and for this I used Army Painter regular white um, primer nothing fancy here okay let's take a closer look on miniatures priming is basically essential before painting because it makes the paint stick better onto the model and gives some Nice background, base coat color too. And I generally uh, prefer a white primer over a darker one like black or gray. Because I made the experience that when I use a black primer uh, it is much harder to use light colors like white, yellow or bright red or something because the darker, bright, uh, the darker black from the primer will always shine through a little bit so you need more color layers and uh, yeah okay take a look again I'm so in love with them already <laughs> I love how the the style of those knights is like and yeah I'm really happy I decided for the Bretonians and I think that's very important that you feel familiar and yeah that you feel familiar with the style of your army and that you love it and because that's what's keeping you painting and what's keeping you playing basically the looks and the the style because if you have an army that you find ugly and that you don't enjoy playing with then the army can be the strongest army in the world and you would stop playing with them because nobody likes to field an ugly army of course ugly here is a question of 
um, flavor and opinion. Because I think no Warhammer Fantasy army is really ugly. They're just different. Oh, and uh, by the way, you might uh, you might ask yourself, um, Ken, where are where are all those shields, man? Because if you take a look at the knights here, none of them is equipped with any shield. So don't worry, people. My knights don't have to charge the enemy without a shield. I got them right here, already in the sprue, still in the sprue. Um, this has basically a very simple reason, because if I would attach those shields here onto the body, onto the left hands, let, let me make this more obvious, um, onto this arm here, then it would get very difficult and hard to paint the areas behind the shield, you know? So, I made the decision to leave the, sh the shields here in the sprue and paint them like this because I want to do some some patterns and some ornaments too and I think this will be a lot easier uh, when doing it while they are still attached to the sprue so I will paint the shields separately and then glue them to the left arms so that's the reason why my knights are not wearing any shields yet. Oh, and by the way, look what else I've done. I'm pretty proud of that myself because I, whoops, <laughs> I attached a little magnet on the lower uh, body part. Whoa, you see actually where it is between the legs and holy shit, that must hurt, but this makes you a real knight in my army, <laughs> to have a magnet between your legs, okay, whatever, and uh, yeah, and I put another magnet <laughs> uh, onto the back of the horse, so this makes it a lot easier to um, put the knight onto the ho horse's back, yep. so I think this is really handy, co might come in handy, especially if you want to simulate um, that one of your knights has fallen from horse, like when he gets killed or something, but the horse still lives, because this, I think this could happen during a battle of Warhammer. So you don't have to remove the whole model or something, you can simply uh, just take the knight off. And this is basically also very nice for uh, switching horses, for example, if I uh, have a day where I might prefer this knight on that horse here. Yeah, I can just let them swap horses. Okay, so and I did this of course to um, every single knight here. Okay, and from the side, I think this is a good angle. Imagine them charging forward into a a line of enemy orcs or Northmen, Chaos, Chaos Demons, whatever. This would be awesome. Okay, so guys, this was day two of my Bretonian Army project. Thanks for watching, and maybe we will see each other in the next video. So long, take care, bye.